Hey everybody, today we, be, we will be going over the expected move function here in optionswatch.io. Now it's a great feature and it's very simple and it is a fantastic tool which can help assist you set up some of your traits. So what we want to go ahead and do as we start here in Options Watch is go to the upper left hand corner and we're going to type in a stock. Let's go ahead and type in SPY for the S&P 500 index right here. The ETF. All right, so we're going to go ahead and use SPY as our, exam as our example here. Now, the expected move, as you can see on this chart, the location will be down here in the bottom right hand corner. There will be two percentiles, percentages, that you can choose, 68% and also 85%. So what the expected move basically is, is it refers to the expected size of price movements, the underlying stock aka SPY, may have by a certain date, also known as the expiration date, which will be up here. In this example, the expected move gives traders and investors a quick way to visualize the likely possible moves for SPY under each expiration date. So what we can go ahead and do is we can look at the expiration date that we currently have selected for April 29th right here. 2.8 days away and the expected move we will use will be 68% as our deviation and the expected move will be referred to as this blue rectangle right here. So what this basically means is that between now and April 29th the SPY can have an expected move anywhere from between the top of this blue rectangle which is probably around $511 anywhere between the top of this rectangle to the bottom of this rectangle, which is around $505. And there is a 68% chance of that happening. All right, so one more time, there is a 68% chance that the S&P will remain between this blue rectangle in terms of its price by April 29th. So what we can go ahead and do is we can also increase the expiration date. Let's go ahead and choose something that's approximately maybe 30 days out. Let's go ahead and select May 31st, which is 35 days out right here. So, so with something 35 days out, that gives us much more time for the S&P to make more moves in terms of its price movements, right? So with an expected move of 68%, <clears throat> as, as the percentage that we'll be using, the rectangle widens much, much, much more, as you can see. The S&P can go as low as around maybe $489, or it can go even as high as $529, anywhere around there, or it can be anywhere in between this area. Now, when you select some of these cursors right here, the expected move will not change. So you can definitely use this blue rectangle to help you set up your trades. Right, maybe you wanted to set up a bullish trade right here, and you select your curses down here to be your profit margins within this expected move, or maybe you wanted to select a different type of trade by selecting the right hand tab up here in this corner. It's not letting me select it, give me one second. There we go, and then we can go ahead and select and maybe an iron condor. And we can use this expected move right here. We can use these guidelines to kind of help refer us to set up an iron condor trade by moving our prices to align with the expected move. Now, of course, nothing's perfect. The market can do whatever the market wants to do, but this is still a great tool for us traders so that we can help visualize what the stock may potentially do with a 68% chance. So the implied, excuse me, the expected move will be heavily affected by what's called, called the implied volatility. And that will be in the upper left-hand corner up here. So the implied volatility in this case is 65%, the percentile, okay? This is the implied volatility percentile. So what that basically means is with an implied volatility of 68%, the market has had a much higher implied volatility only 35% of the time over the past 52 weeks. Okay, let me repeat that one more time. The implied volatility percentile of 68, 65% refers 
to SPY having a higher implied volatility only 35% of the time over the past 52 weeks. So generally speaking, this implied volatility is relatively high at the moment. And when you have a very high IV, when IV is very, very, very high, that can lead to a potentially higher expected move. Okay. So that being said, if this implied volatility percentile was say 30%, then what you can basically see is this rectangle on the right hand side be potentially smaller. Maybe it looks something more like this, right? And with a higher IV, that just means the market is less confident about the future price of the stock, right? It's the implied volatility which can lead to larger expected moves. On the contrary, a lower IV will increase traders and investors confidence, making the expected move much, much smaller. So that is how you can use expected move and the implied volatility as reference points for setting up your trades. One thing to consider is that when we are talking about the probability of where the SPY may go, we are only talking about the market's point of view. Therefore, we are only talking about implied probabilities, not the actual probabilities of certain prices being reached. As expected moves do not showcase all outcomes, as by May 31st here with our expiration dates, the S&P 500 could very well go below 487 in this area or above 528 in this area if it wanted to. Okay. But that is how you can use expect and move to your advantage and really help you set up your trades. Hopefully you found this helpful. Cheers and have a fantastic rest of your day.